Hello, what is up guys? I'm your host Gordon and welcome to another one of my videos. Today we got ourselves a XS HK416D shell ejecting foam dart blaster. And this is not those one of those manual shell ejecting foam dart blaster. This is a flywheel shell ejecting foam dart blaster. And take a look at this. How cool is that? And of course, this video wouldn't be possible without the help from Mac Potato for helping me to get this blaster. To those who do not know who is Mac Potato, Mac Potato is a local online foam dart blaster seller who sells rare imported foam dart blaster just like this one. And in the same time, if you guys are interested in shell ejecting blasters such as the XM1014 or even the AM870, feel free to visit Mac Potato. Link is in the description down below. In the box, we got the blaster itself, a banana mag, a normal mag, a buttstock, a barrel extension, a huge fake scope, a grip, a battery and a charger, an unjamming rod, two bags of shells, 20 darts, and a manual. To install the buttstock, just align the buttstock with the notch at the blaster over here you will have to use some force as it is pretty tight. After that, twist the buttstock in place. For the barrel, you just have to friction fit it just like so. To install the grip, there is a button at the middle of the grip. Just press the button and slide the grip in place. Same goes to the scope. The battery compartment is located at the bottom of the handle. Just open the cover, pull out the wire, connect the wire to the battery, put the battery in, and close the cover. After that, you can turn on the blaster which in the same time power up the flywheel. The blaster comes with these tiny chrome shells as well as these kind of darts which is slightly shorter than the original Nerf darts. And this is how you put the darts into the shells. The shell ejecting features only works with the banana mag because only the banana mags have these cut out for the shells to slide out. To load the shells, you will have to push the dart head in first before pushing the entire shell in from the back. This is how the blaster looks like with everything installed. Okay, first look at the blaster. So basically, the scale of this blaster is absolutely funny. I mean, take a look at the barrel and take a look at the buttstock. This is probably the smallest buttstock that I've ever seen in a foam dart blaster, at least in my collection. And of course, it is totally understandable because this blaster is marketed towards children and these are for really small children. As you can see, the buttstock is so tiny. And the build quality of this blaster is... Uh, it feels like a, like a toy. Yes, I, I'm not sure how I'm gonna explain this, but the whole plastic quality situation over here, it literally feels like a toy the moment you hold it in hand. I mean, yeah, that's how it is. I mean, there is no rocket science happening over here. It is basically a very simple mechanism. The magazine over here is actually the secret. As you can see, there is a small cutout at the magazine over here, which basically allows the shells to slip out after the darts was fired. If you actually look closer at the magazine over here, the shell pusher is actually slightly slanted, which allows the shells to slide out the blaster. So technically, the dart itself is actually holding the shell in place. I mean, you can still put the shells into the magazine even without the dart, but when you put it into the blaster, all the shells fly out because there is no dart holding them. So in simple terms, the darts are actually holding the shells using friction. I mean, of course, the shell is not ejecting like what we usually see in pump action blaster. This is more like a dart falling off or just slides out. I mean, this is probably the only interesting thing about this blaster. There is nothing too much to talk about. As you can see, it's just like those basic 
Picatinny reel situation. There is a Picatinny reel over here, uh, more Picatinny reel at the side grip over here, just like your regular M4 style Picatinny reel arrangement. And there is a Picatinny reel at the top over here. And there is a box at the middle of the blaster which holds the flywheel. And there is a obnoxiously huge scope that serve absolutely no purpose. Same goes with the obnoxiously long barrel extender, which of course, serve no purpose as well. The only useful accessory is of course the grip, which I can use in some other blaster because it is like a standard Picatinny reel size. And there is like a hidden iron sight over here, which I will probably never use. Other features such as the safety, when you turn the flywheel off, you will not be able to use the trigger. When you turn on the flywheel, you can use the trigger. And I guess that's it. So without further ado, let us go test the blaster out. Okay, okay, so the performance of this blaster is, of course, uh, toy level. So we are looking at a 43 FPS all the way to 49 FPS. So, uh, yeah, it's not suitable for competitive play. And the accuracy of this blaster is just okay. I mean, it's not the best, but it's doable, it's still playable. In 5 to 7 meters, you can still kind of score a hit when you, you kind of tilt the blaster enough for it. Operating this blaster, sometimes I encounter some gems while using the shell ejecting magazine over here. So this basically happens when the battery is low. So make sure to fully charge the battery before using this blaster. So now I kind of understand why they actually provided such a long rod over here. So basically this is a unjamming rod for us to, you know, poke the dot out when the dot starts to jam in the blaster. In conclusion, this is of course not a competitive blaster, but in the same time, it is actually fun to play with. So yep, that's all today guys. Like this video if you like it, dislike this video if you do not like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and of course, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Adios, guys!